Hi everybody, Steve Patrick with Patrick Mouthpieces here, uh, doing some videos while I have some time on my hands. And today I wanted to talk to you about the anatomy of a mouthpiece. What goes, what components make up a mouthpiece? Um, and I wanted to just give some definitions. So this is a one-piece mouthpiece as opposed to a two-piece mouthpiece. All right, so with a one-piece mouthpiece, you have a rim, you have a cup down after the rim, you have a throat section right in here, and then you have the back bore, the rest of from about here down, okay? So let's start with the top of the mouthpiece. Uh, people usually give measurements based on the inner diameter of a mouthpiece. And that's, that's a good starting point. All of these are general starting points to get people in the ballpark for the right size of what they would want to play on. And um, it's, it's difficult to fit people for the right mouthpiece just based on numbers because we're really fitting your teeth. You're, we're fitting your teeth and we're also fitting your lips and how that combination of those two things fit into on a certain type of rim and into the, the cup, how they fall into the cup. So uh, the inner diameter of a mouthpiece is from the inside of the rim to the other side of the mouthpiece inside of the rim. So if you've heard of people um, say ID, that means inner diameter. So that's the inner diameter. The high point, if you if you took this mouthpiece and kind of rubbed it on a, a flat surface, maybe a kitchen counter or something like that, you would create a mark on the rim where the high point is. And that can be towards the inside of the rim. And if it's towards the inside, that mouthpiece is going to feel smaller than if the high point is in on the center or further out towards the edge of the mouthpiece. So um, just remember inside makes it feel smaller, middle of the rim makes it feel a little bit bigger, outer part of the rim makes it feel even bigger. An example of, of this would be uh, my Patrick 10 and a half C, my original 10 and a half C, which personally that mouthpiece doesn't work well for me because that high point is further out towards the edge of the rim. A lot of people have said that it feels very comfortable because it they don't usually play on smaller mouthpieces but it feels bigger to them and that's because the high point is so far out. So even though the measurements from the inner diameter would make it be a 10 and a half C, it feels comfortable to people that are even on mouthpieces as big as a 3 C because of how far that that high point is out. I just say all that for point of reference so we can know what we're talking about when we say inner diameter, outer diameter, and high point. Some people just feel one measurement. Some people might just feel that inner diameter measurement just the way it fits on their teeth and their lips. Some people might just feel the outer diameter. And some people might feel that high point uh, some people might feel a combination of two or three of these things and all of these all of these reasons Factor in to how a mouthpiece is going to feel for each individual and we're all unique We're all different when it comes to these things So I personally tend to feel all three of those things But those measurements but the primary measurement that I feel that I'm pretty sensitive to is that high point and um, all right, so there's that. Then you have the cup design. You have a couple basic cup designs, and, and then you can have kind of combinations of those two cup designs. You can have a bowl shape. So even within bowl shapes, you might have a shallow bowl, okay? Or you might have a, a deeper bowl. Uh, so like that's the difference between uh, a Bach C cup versus a Bach B cup or a Bach D cup. You know, they're different, 
different depths of a different bowl shape, but they're all bowl shape. You also have V cup shapes that that tend to have either straight V's, which are like Maynard mouthpieces from the 50s and 60s and 70s, or you can have V shapes that go kind of straight down. I'll get this on, on video. Straight down, and then they come over into a V, which is the way a lot of the Patrick commercial line is. Okay, then you have the entrance to the throat right here, right as it goes, goes into the hole. Some some of those measure some of those are are more open, a more open entrance to the throat, which feels more open when you play. It takes more air. Some of those have uh, a tighter entrance to the throat. Um, a good example of a very tight entrance to the throat would be some of the Shilky, like a 14A4A or a 6A4A or a Marcinkowitz Bobby Shoe model. Those have tight entrances to the throat which create a lot of compression. Um, a loose entrance to the throat would be the old jet tones from the 60s and 70s. Those those are rounded in like this. They round in like, like if you take a balloon and pull it at the bottom, it would kind of do that shape. Those create less compression there, but they might have compression built in someplace else in the cup. So there's, there's a lot of ways to gain the same outcome by a design and, and different ways where you can create compression or resistance in different areas of these different components on a mouthpiece. The last thing after that, uh, after that is your throat section that can be different lengths. And then you have the shape of a back bore. So this is the back bore. It's easier to see right here with that. That's your back bore. And somewhere between the bottom of the, the top and the top of the back bore, you have your throat section. So those are the components of a mouthpiece, and we'll talk in future videos on how to try out mouthpieces, and when you approach to getting a different mouthpiece or desiring a mouthpiece, what are you looking for, and what can help you uh, gain steps in your playing, what can help you play better in certain areas, whether it's resistance or um, range or any of those things. Um, thanks for tuning in, and we'll have more of these. Thanks.